So for this week's video, I'm doing something I don't like to do. I think I've only done it once before on the channel, if ever, and that is this the series I'm working on, the piece just isn't done in time for Saturday's video. And that's mainly because the customer just recently got back to me about how she wanted to finish the top. So I just did not have enough time with drawing times of finishes to get it done before, um, before Saturday's upload. So that's not a huge deal for me. Um, it might, it's obviously not ideal for the YouTube channel. I'd like to upload this series consecutively, but at the end of the day, I would rather um, someone take their time making their decision, then rush it, and then when I've already started, something changed their mind. So as far as that concern, it's not a big deal. I should be able to wrap it up next week. So as a filler video, I um, a couple months ago at this point, I've just been really busy and I don't um, have time to, my lead time on a lot of my projects, even small ones at this point is a couple months. But a couple months ago, a guy I've made uh, wooden carved parts before stopped by and his newest project is he wanted this armrest made, made in wood. Um, I knew I know enough about cars to know what he pulled up in was an older Bronco. I don't know enough to date it precisely. My most educated guess would probably be the late 80s. But regardless, he wanted obviously two of these ones for the passenger and the driver, and that is what I ended up making. Um, I like projects like this. I like reverse engineering things and figuring out how to make them obviously in wood versus plastic especially since I don't particularly care for plastic. And um, of all of my videos on YouTube, the car part, wooden car part videos are some of my more popular in the sense that I get a lot of emails aside from you, YouTube of people asking for them and even ordering ones for their vehicles. So it's a quick little build. I consider this sort of thing to be a fairly simple project. Um, I work on things, multiple things at a time, so it's really hard to estimate time as far as projects go. If I had to make these, I could prob I could easily make them, um, minus drawing times for finish, easily make them in a, a day, maybe a weekend. So like I said, very quick build showing you how I recreated these in wood. And then next week will be the third part of, of the uh, liquor cabinet build. So a couple months ago, I made a mid-century modern modular style built in and I ordered up extra walnut for my lumber guy. I never regret doing that. I always end up using it and it saves me a trip. Luckily, this material was almost the exact uh, perfect dimensions for this. So I just cut a chunk off the end and then I could start roughing out my pieces. So this is a pretty straightforward piece. There's some curve, uh, some, some a mostly angles to it, which I had to be concerned with. There were these screw mounts at the bottom, but I'm considering, I, I assuming that that is only because that this is, uh, the center of this is foam. So since this is lumber, the piece I'm making it out of, I'm assuming I didn't need those. But if I have to add them when the customer comes back, I will. But for this video, I did omit those little mounting mounting chamfers on the bottom. So this lumber was a little too thick for this, but as far as width and length, it was perfect. So I'm cutting it down to exact width at this point. I don't remember that exact dimension. I think it was about an inch and a half. And then it was a little too thick, only by about an eighth of an inch. So I'm cutting this down to exact thickness as well, just removing that eighth of an inch. The only dimension I leave long is gonna be the length. I'll, cut, I'll, I'll um, cut that down a little later. So the center of this, obviously, because it's an older armrest, is a little bit caved in. So I, I pulled all my dimensions from either ends to avoid that, that wear and tear. So the first thing I'm doing is cutting the angle that's in the front of this piece. You can see the top of it is a little flat, and then it comes to a point on the end, which, is, which designates the thickness of that flat edge and then it angles downwards. So all I did was, was mark that about a half inch on mine, and then I got the front of the angle and marked it on mine as well. Um, apologies for the camera jumping around. Sometimes it's a necessity to film one-handed, but it is, it is not, as, not super easy. So then I could, I could set my blade. I forget what this was. It was a very slight angle, less than 10 degrees, and I could just cut that down on the table saw. 
and you can see it matches matches quite well to the original then I used my fence as a reference as a, for a, a straight edge so that I could get these dimensions perfect and I drew the two, the two corners one has two angled cuts the other only has one and then I was going to cut these on the cross cut sled I could use these these screw downs in, in uh, my cross cut sled in order to get these cuts perfect I'm just eyeing these up the cut I lined up with the edge of the saw blade and also the kerf that's already cut in the cross cut sled and I could get a pretty pretty perfect cut I like to do these sorts of cuts on the table saw because you get a nice clean straight cut same thing for the other side I just lined up that pencil mark I had on there with the champ uh, the 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 kerf already caught on the table saw and then for the second cut because I'm now working off of that angled surface it would be a straight cut on the radial arm saw and that is how I decided to do that one so now I have my angles so then in order to make the other one this is a mirror of the first one it's not a duplicate so I just lined it up back to back and made all the exact same marks and then I cut that one out the same way I cut the first one out I didn't film it because it was the exact same process but then I have my my two blanks I raised the height of my table saw blade in order to cut out the handle this also has curves on it so I cut up straight right where the curve meets the flat section on both ends and then I'll cut I'll cut the curve with a hand saw but I just make a bunch of curve cuts with the table saw You could do this with a dado stack as well, but I don't mind doing a bunch of these with just the regular saw blade. And then I could push all of these pieces out, clean it up with a chisel a little bit, and then bring it back to the table saw. And if you slowly creep up on the blade, you could see you can clean out the bottom of any cut. So a little bit at a time, sliding it back and forth over the blade, especially on a cross cut sled like this is not dangerous, and it could clean out the bottom of that piece. So then, obviously I'm doing the ex almost the exact same thing twice, but I only film it for one of the handles. So then I could go through and cut off those corners. Once again, I do this with a handsaw. The other side was a very, very slight curve, so I didn't film that one. And then that matches the handle as well. So then there's a fairly big chamfer on the bottom of this. Um, I added this because I don't know if it's necessary for the handle. It's obviously not going to be seen. So I'm assuming it's clearance for something else on the vehicle. This was also pretty easy to do. Just use an oscillating multi-tool in the order. There's, it comes to a triangular point at the end, but then the rest is flat. I could roughly remove the bulk of this material and then when I go through and start shaping this I could clean up all of these cuts and that was how I matched match the chamfer. And then you can see just side by side what that looks like. So for the curves, it curves around all of the front edges. You can see I have a reference mark based off of the curves on the piece. Where the curve on the piece starts to go over the edge, that's the measurement I take. So on the one side it was three quarters, so the reference mark I marked in from the edge is three quarters. And then to speed up the process, I'm starting with the power planer, and then I'm just making that curve go over to my marks. That's how, to, to, that's how I duplicated the curves on this piece see the power planer just makes quick work of this I have reference marks in the front as well you can see I always have the handle sitting next to me so I can reference that also curve over the corners and then I could clean it up with a little palm plane I have the power planer is great for for quickly removing material the accuracy on it is is not the best so I'll usually start with that just to save time then switch over to handheld tools and then I could clean up the majority of the curve with this little sander I have in my shop. I couldn't do the whole thing because it's only, I believe, a six inch disc. Then for the inside curve of the handle as well, there's it's um, 
it chamfers down a little bit on either edge. So same thing, I made my reference marks and then I'm just gonna bring that bit up to my mark. You can see not only does it curve over on the top, but it will curve over all the way down the handle. So once I get that initial curve, then I could go through and just drag and feather, feather blend that, that, that curve out to the bottom. And just get it to match, match to the eye. Once that was done, that, that material was had a pretty rough finish, so I put a little bit of a smoother bit into, into my Dremel and I could smooth over these pieces. The inside, the inside corners are always going to be one of the more difficult pieces to do. And then once that was done, I used a sander. I was working on the built-in around the same time as these. You can see my, sh my sander is brand new and changes brands, and that is because I broke the Bosch sander I was using on that build. Um, a sander, unfortunately, is one of those things you can't really... I like to research tools before I buy them but I need it in the shop pretty much every day. So I, or, I did a little bit of research and ordered this Makita one with a side handle on it from Amazon. This is not a sponsored post or anything like that. It's a little nervous about the side handle getting in the way of projects, but I like this one so much more than my Bosch sander already, and I've only had it for a little over a month. So the finish on these, I was using um, water locks on another project it's a very durable finish i believe i've used it on his other pieces before so that is what i put on i put on three coats of water locks and um that is the finished piece